Douglas, what are you doing? Come on, Douglas, what are you doing? I thought I was going to have plenty of time to film during the operating session I had this morning. So I had my first operating session in about two years. And in the two years since COVID started and we stopped having operating sessions, I have backdated the railroads in 1965. And you guys have seen that in various videos over the last year or so. So this was the first op session where I actually tried to run a scenario based on that uh, time frame. So we're going to look around and see what the results of the op session are. Unfortunately, because I could not stop long enough to pick up the camera and, and film uh, during the op session. But we'll just look and see where we ended up at. So you've seen this train running in the last couple of videos here, and this train was B12, and it made it from Waterville Station down here to Rigby Station. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that in the back behind it, but behind it there is the first Rockland freight train that made it from Rockland down into the Rigby Station. So those two trains did make it in the stage and they did complete their runs. The other train that came out of Waterville was the uh, Waterville to Brunswick train and back and right here we have the train and it's actually sitting in the Gardner area so he managed to get from Waterville through Augusta down in the guard or, or past Gardner worked Richmond got down the helix to Brunswick came back up the helix to uh, Richmond where he actually finished uh, switching Richmond and he was in Gardner when we shut the session down at two and a half hours but uh, Again, this was a first time session, so it was kind of a feeling out and figuring out what we were going to get out of the session. So that's the WK2, and on the way back, it's KW1. So this is actually it as it's turning back as KW1. The other train that came out of Rigby was RA1, and it ran from Rigby through Brunswick to Lewis and Lower, and at Lewis and Lower it turned and became AR2 heading back to Rigby. So he got AR2 to Lewis and Lower. He managed to switch out the Pajeep Scott paper mill. Of course I probably butchered that name, but anyway, this paper mill got switched out. And he was on his train getting ready to head back to Brunswick with cars from Lewis and Lower. He had quite a long train there, and some of those cars would go and stay at the Brunswick Yard for other locations, and the rest of the train would have gone back to Rigby. We also had the Lewis and Lower Yard switcher, and that's the locomotive right there. So I started out with a, a brand new sound equipped locomotive that I had just had the uh, installation done. It was 953, and I had actually run it right before the op session, but during the op session, when we first tried to start up, we couldn't get the pickup, so that's off the troubleshooting track, and I put 303 as a replacement, and 303 is a sound equipped, but it's a uh, Atlas diesel that's been uh, custom painted and uh, lettered by me. And the interesting thing was when the Lewiston Lower turn got to Lewiston Lower, it should have had a few more cars. So there is uh, three cars that it came in with to Lewis and Lower, and they were spotted by the Lewis and Lower switcher. And obviously the train that left Lewis and Lower, the Lewis and Lower switcher had pulled all the cars from these industries. And Lewis and Lower is from basically that green building on the left there. And all those trackage and all that sidings and down to that yard at end. So there should have been a lot more cars in that train. And what happened was the WK1 train from Waterville to Brunswick did not get to Brunswick before the Lewis and Lower train got to Brunswick. So I'm gonna to have to do something about the operating scheme to get that train there first, because he actually had uh, Lewis and Lower cars that uh, are sitting over there in Brunswick Yard now, but never made it onto the train going to Lewis and Lower. This right here is the second Rockland train from Rigby to Rockland. So he had the first Rockland train you saw on stage at the beginning of the video. This is the train that left Rigby, which was R and three, and he basically came out of Rigby stage and ran through the layout to Brunswick. At Brunswick, he dropped most of this train at Brunswick, and on the head end, he had a uh, meat reefer, and that meat reefer he had to take with just him and the caboose down the. And that meat reefer he took down the Lewiston Lower Branch and dropped it at Element, 
I'll show you that here in a second. So this is element on the Lewiston Lower Branch. So if I pull back here, you see that siding where that meat reefer is, and there's obviously Lewiston Lower the yard limits. Element was right before Lewiston you know, Lower, and uh, obviously in this 1965 section, Element is, is, is here. But if I'm doing 1970s, then this is the uh, the sheetrock mill at uh, Lisbon Falls. So I changed the siding design, and so right now you see it's on scenic. And what this has made me inside is so I'm going to have uh, two sets of buildings for here. I'll have the, uh, the wall board plant for the 1970s sessions. And when I do a 1960s session, I'll pull the wall board plant out and we'll have some other buildings here and sidings for Elmet. So the last uh, position or job here was the Augusta Road Switcher. And this is 961, which was the Augusta Road Switcher. So he had a lot of cars that he had to uh, work and the Augusta Road Switcher works East Augusta here, which is the, if I pull back here, you can see the whole Statler tissue mill. So he's got the Statler tissue mirror, and then on the very right there, you see the propane tank. So that's a propane dealer. He was actually getting ready to drop that car into the propane dealer after pulling an empty out. And then he had to take that New York Central car to a freight house. He'd already put all the new cars into Statler tissue. And then he was pulling these cars back the rest of Augusta. So as we go around here, he also dropped a car here at O'Connor Scrap. He had picked up a car from this business up here in the corner that had to be returned. And if we go down here, there were cars in Augusta Yard it needed to be picked up, so he had a Rockland car and two Lewis and Lower cars. Both of those cars were supposed to go in WK1 <laughs> and get down to Brunswick so that the uh, the Lewis and Lower turn would have the Lewis and cars and the Rockland train would have picked up that Rockland, that car for Rockland, but that never happened. So again, it's, it's, it's <laughs> you never can tell what somebody's going to do. Now what we have here on this side is we have a lot of cars, so you have three cars here that are to be taken and placed at these industries here. So there, there's the Munden Appliance and there's Consolidated Grocers. Those cars were actually supposed to be pulled and then there were cars to be put in here to uh, uh, be loads. They never made it. And then we have some other cars here that were supposed to go to Gardner and Cabusa Conti Branch and Hallowell, and uh, they never got that far. So the Augusta Road Switcher is probably the busiest job on the railroad, and uh, if you don't plan early, you're, you're, you're never gonna get the job finished. But in reality, the Augusta Road Switcher was a uh, full day tr tr uh, crew that manned that thing, and it, it was a busy switcher that was stationed there. In the 70s, you had the two uh, Gardner turns that came out of Waterville, but in the 60s, it was a station switcher here. So those cars never got sorted out there. And that means that Hollowell was never worked. That means that Caboose Conti was never worked. And that means that Gardner was never worked. So there were cars in Gardner that needed to be pulled also. So got to figure out how to make this work a little better so the guys that have the Augusta Road Switcher can actually get more of their work done. The other option I have is that some of these trains may just run half the turn and then not come back because it took about two hours to get halfway on the turn for the, uh, the Waterville to Brunswick turn and the uh, Lisbon Lower turn both took about almost a two hour point to get them done. And last we'll look here at uh, Brunswick Yard. When I uh, started the session, this yard was quite full and it will have more cars for it, but uh, this is what was left in the yard from the trains going through and, and out. Now, obviously the uh, train coming out of Lewiston Lower would have dropped cars here and the uh, Rockland train would probably drop some cars here, but uh, the yard is actually kind of empty now.